Hi everyone, this is the lecture on HLA subtypes associated with diseases. Let's get started. So it's important to know that MHC1 and MHC2 are proteins encoded by genes referred to as HLA genes, and that stands for human leukocyte antigen. MHC1 is encoded by HLA-A, HLA-B, and HLA-C. MHC2 is encoded by HLA-DP, HLA-DQ, and HLA-DR. Sometimes, the body may attack its own cells if the MHC1 and 2 receptors too closely resemble foreign pathogens. Can you guess what examples of HLA genes are associated with certain diseases? Well, we're about to find out. Can you recall what disease is associated with HLA-A3? Yep, it's hemochromatosis. Now the mnemonic for it is to spell it like the British spell heme, so H-A-E-M, with the three standing in for the E, just like in Haemophilus. Hemochromatosis is an autosomal recessive disease, most commonly caused by a C282Y mutation on the HFE gene on chromosome 6. There's some high-yield biochem and genetics for you. Can you remember the classic triad of hemochromatosis? You're right if you said cirrhosis, diabetes, and skin pigmentation. This is commonly referred to as bronze diabetes. Here in this image, we can see hemosiderin, or iron, on this liver biopsy stained with what? That's right, it's Prussian blue. Other organs that are affected by iron accumulation are the heart, the testes, and joints, and can cause restrictive or dilated cardiomyopathy, hypogonadism, or arthropathy. With all this organ involvement, do you know what a common cause of death is for people with hemochromatosis? You're right if you said hepatocellular carcinoma. And how do we treat it? We need to get rid of that iron so we can do repeated phlebotomies or chelate that iron. With what? Deferocerox, deferoxamine, or deferepron. FE stands for iron, so it's like we're trying to delete that iron. Now, moving on, do you know what disease is associated with HLA-B8? You're right if you said Addison's disease, myasthenia gravis, and Graves' disease. Our mnemonic for this is a little silly quote. Don't be late, Dr. Addison, or else you'll send my patients to the grave. So be late should remind you of B8. And as you can see in red, it reminds you of Addison disease, myasthenia gravis, and Graves' disease. I'm sure you're familiar with Graves' disease, since it's the most common cause of hyperthyroidism and myasthenia gravis, because it's the most common neuromuscular junction disorder. But what is Addison disease? You're right if you're saying it has to do with adrenal insufficiency. Common symptoms of adrenal insufficiency are what? weakness, fatigue, and orthostatic hypotension. There can be primary, secondary, and even tertiary adrenal insufficiency. Do you know which one Addison disease falls under? You're right if you said primary. It's due to a problem of the adrenal glands themselves, and Addison disease is the chronic form of primary adrenal insufficiency due to adrenal atrophy or getting destroyed by a disease. So what about HLA-B27? You're right if you said psoriatic arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, IBD-associated arthritis, and reactive arthritis, which we commonly abbreviate as PAIR. These are also known as the seronegative arthropathies. Psoriatic arthritis is associated with skin psoriasis and nail lesions, which are often asymmetric, as you can see in this image. The patients often present with dactylitis, also known as sausage fingers, which shows on x-ray as a pencil and cup deformity that you can see in this image. Can anyone tell me what this picture is showing? Yes, 
This is showing a bamboo spine or vertebral fusion in ankylosing spondylitis. Ankylosing spondylitis is associated with uveitis and aortic regurgitation. But if you have decreased mobility of your spine because the joints are fused, what else can you have? You're right if you said restrictive lung disease. You can actually tell how severe the disease is based on how well you can expand your chest wall. Well, what about HLAC? You're right if you said psoriasis. In this image, we can see papules and plaques with some silver scaling on the hand. But in this image, do you know what the arrow is pointing to? You're right if you said the auspice sign. There's spots of bleeding that can happen when the scales get scraped off and you've exposed the dermal papillae. Well, I think that's enough for the MHC1 HLA subtypes. Let's move on to the MHC2 HLA subtypes. And again, they're HLA-DP, DQ, and DR. Can you tell me what HLA-DQ2, DQ8 is associated with? You're right if you said celiac disease. The mnemonic for this one is one of my favorites, just because I really like ice cream. I ate too much gluten at Dairy Queen. So just remember eight with the number eight and two as the number two. And the abbreviation for Dairy Queen is DQ. Now gluten is in the mnemonic too because celiac disease is gluten sensitivity. We can see from this image that there is villus atrophy and crypt hyperplasia. So we've got villus atrophy here and crypt hyperplasia. Can anyone tell me what this other image is? You're right if you said dermatitis herpetiformis, which can be a physical exam finding in patients with celiac disease. Another very high yield association you should know is that patients with celiac disease have a moderately increased risk of malignancy. Do you know what that malignancy is? Yes, it's T-cell lymphoma. Moving on to HLA-DR2. Do you know what that subtype is associated with? Yes, it has a few associations. Multiple sclerosis, hay fever, SLE, and good pasture syndrome. Well, let's talk about multiple sclerosis for a bit. It's an autoimmune inflammation and demyelination of the central nervous system, and it can present with a bunch of different findings. One finding can be intranuclear ophthalmoplegia, which is when the affected side of the eye can't adduct while the other eye is abducting. So the unaffected eye will have nystagmus. Can you remember where that lesion is? Yep, it's the medial longitudinal fasciculus, or MLF. As much as multiple sclerosis has a lot of neurorelations, it's also great for questions in pharmacology. How do we treat acute flares? You're right if you said IV steroids. What about refractory multiple sclerosis? Well, we can use natalizumab, which targets the alpha-4 integrin and affects white blood cell adhesion. However, do you know the major risk with natalizumab? Well, there's an increased risk of PML or progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy in patients with the JC virus. See, this is how a neuro question becomes an anatomy, pathology, immunology, microbiology, and pharmacology question, which board exams love to do. Well, what about good pasture syndrome? It's associated with which type of glomerulonephritis? Yep, you're right if you said rapidly progressive or crescentic glomerulonephritis. Do you remember what the autoantibodies are against? Yep, they are anti-basement membrane antibodies. Now again, remember, for HLA-DR2, it is multiple sclerosis, hay fever, SLE, and good pasture syndrome. And our mnemonic for that is that multiple hay pastures are dirty. Can you tell me what HLA-DR3 is associated with? Well, you're right if you named some of these diabetes mellitus type 1, SLE, Graves' disease, Hashimoto thyroiditis, and Addison disease. Since both HLA-DR2 and HLA-DR3 are associated with SLE, the mnemonic is 2-3-SLE, which has a nice rhyme and rhythm to it. Now, what about HLA-DR4? 
It's associated with rheumatoid arthritis, diabetes mellitus type 1, and Addison disease. We've mentioned diabetes type 1 and Addison disease a few times now, but rheumatoid arthritis is new. So a good way to remember this is to know that there are four walls in a room. Can anyone remember the names of these deformities in rheumatoid arthritis? Yeah, the one on the left looks like a swan neck, and the one on the right looks like you're trying to button up a shirt. So they are the swan neck and boutonniere deformities, respectively. Lastly, what about HLA-DR5? It's associated with Hashimoto thyroiditis. And the way we can remember that, since we also mentioned it previously, is that Hashimoto is an odd doctor. So the odd DR numbers that we've talked about are 3 and 5. So HLA-DR3 and DR5 are for Hashimoto. Now, I don't know about you, but that was a lot of information. Here it all is together on one slide. Unfortunately, it's one of those tables you should memorize, and there's really no easy way to go about it. But I hope this video helped. That's all I have for you. Thanks for joining me. If you have any feedback or questions, please click on the thumb icon and submit your comments or questions there. Thanks.